Okay, one more for tonight, March 6th. I'm back. Straight music, okay? Got on my favorite sweater. When I got my blue sweater on, I'm good. I don't know how long I've had this sweater. I might have had this sweater. I may have had this sweater 15 years or, or longer. It's one of my favorite sweaters. Yeah, I tend to hang on, to, on this stuff. Okay, I'm going to talk about some of, some of my records. Not something new, just stuff in my collection. One of the things that hangs me up is... You know, I'll want to talk about the records, but then I'll grab them and it's like, I haven't listened to this in a long time. I've forgotten half of what I know about it. So, so be it. I'll show you some records, tell you what I can, and that's all I can do. You can't hear it, but I'm listening to Oval, Zenario. This is on Thrill Jockey. This came out in 1999. I didn't look it up. Some, I don't know why I'm thinking either this... That there's a connection to Mouse on Mars here, possibly. I don't know, but sometimes this type of electronic music is referred to as glitch, in that one of the ways that this music is produced is through um, CD errors and other electronic glitches, errors, literally. They make music out of it. And um, it's just really good. There's an ambient nest to it but it's not relaxing um draws my attention you know it's subtle and it doesn't change much but when i when i'm quiet i'm listening this is really good oval I wanted to show this 1999 throw jockey here's something that i really can't find much about so i'll tell you what i've figured out about it this is called mother tongue and it's uh a project called Open in Obscurity on the Touch Label. And what we have here is a collaboration between Andrew McKenzie of the Hafler Trio, Zev, and another performer named Doro. I didn't look up her um, background. This is really good for, again, for folks that kind of like it, Things that are slightly dark, maybe even a little creepy, but you love sound and um, percussion. This is really good. It's a very interesting, it's coming back to me. I did sample a little bit to refresh my memory, but it's coming back because I have uh, enjoyed this album immensely. It's very interesting, the mixture of the woman's voice, the percussion that Zev interjects with the field recordings, whatever it is Mackenzie does with his recordings, but the man is a master of manipulating, manipulating sound and creating other worlds. This is real good. I just want to show this mother tongue. All right, let me uh, try to tell you when it came out. Touch is an album, a uh, record label that I don't know if is around anymore, but I found interesting. And uh, whenever I see their records affordable, this was 1988. I try to pick them up. This is the inner sleeve open and obscurity one person that comes to mind right away who i think may be interested in this if you don't have this already is uh, christopher in uh in uh, sweden um infinite groove haven't seen uh infinite groove lately but this is something infinite groove you would you definitely would like this other folks, I'm not sure. I'm I'm getting the impression that to the boy Ellis Henry that that you you you're all about exploration and dealing with darkness. I think you would dig this if you don't know this already. Okay, I'm going to turn over the oval because I'm really enjoying it. So another band I've been wanting to talk about, and I just went ahead and pulled it because um, I can't find much information about them, but I love this band, the Ophelias. And this is cool on the Rough Trade record and the die cut cover. This again goes back to maybe about 1988-89. This band is an interesting mix of pop, post-punk, and prog. Another band that they remind me of at times is the Posies. They had a really funky video on MTV's 120 Minutes called Lawrence of Euphoria. It's on YouTube. It's funky. It's it, it's silly. I love it. And it's on YouTube. Look it up. 
This is real good. Like I said, punk. No, no, no. Post punk, pop, and prog mixed together. This is this is. It. And again, it's one of those records. Why don't you know about this record? Why did the Ophelias not get heralded? I'm imagining it may be down to personality issues. Because a lot of times that happens. It's like if if like the band leader is difficult or somebody in the band is not willing to let the manager or somebody from the record company suck their dick, then things can really go south real quick. I'm dead serious, people, okay? That's how this shit used to work. Probably still works exactly the same way. So the Ophelias, check this one out. Here's something obscure as hell from the 70s. Michael Perlich, Keyboard Tales. Apparently he made three albums. I've never seen any one but this one. To say that this is progressive is a stretch. It's one guy playing keyboards and singing for the most part. Now he does long songs and he just kind of goes off on a trip in these songs with his lyrics and stuff. There's almost a gospel, <clears throat> excuse me, there's almost a gospeliness to it, but it's also prog too. Love the cover. Love that cover. On the Atlantic Records label. Let's see when this was released. Michael, Perl Michael Perlich's Keyboard Tales. 1972. And uh, he plays all the instruments and sings everything. It's just, this is a this was another Todd Rundgren type of production. He does everything. Seek this one out, folks. I think some of you um, folks would really enjoy this, especially if you like music from the '70s. Here's one I pulled and had to play it because I couldn't remember it at all. The band is Peak from Australia. Abandazar is the name of the album. This is a reissue of this album on Innovative Communications. This is cool. It's a uh, prog electronic. This is cool. It's kind of hard to describe who they sound like. This is real cool. It's another album where when I play it, I'd be wondering, well, what happened here? This is really good. A real neat mixture of synthesizers, guitars and drums and just it's unique this is really good um if any of my australian brothers know anything more about this uh fred do you know any about anything about peak could you um could you tell me more about this band i'd love to know it's a good one on klaus schultz label innovative communication Here's something that I bought cheaply, but didn't know anything about it, and I really like it. It's cut, for me, it's club music, in a way, peace orchestra. But this is good music to play while I'm doing stuff like house cleaning and, and arranging things. It's got a good beat, but it's not the kind of beat that makes me want to dance. It's a motivating beat. Apparently, some song from this was used on some TV program or something that got a lot of notoriety. I don't know because I don't watch TV. But I pulled this to show. I was down in my P section, as you can see. O's and P's. Oval Peace Orchestra, Michael Perlich, Ophelia's. Kind of a cool cover. It's kind of cool. Is that a movie still? It makes me think, is this like from some old movie, some old hippie movie? Is that Robert Redford? <laughs> I don't know. Last thing I'll show that I'm planning on showing, because I don't know, I may stop, I may keep going. This is Pass Into Silence. It's a Japanese duo. This is on the compact label. This is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It sounds like it looks pastel -y, impressionistic, electronic, but melodic. Not quite static, it moves, but not much, you know what I'm saying? This is awesome. 
here in Omaha, I don't come across too many compact label releases in the stores. I envy you folks in the bigger cities where you can just walk into a store and see those wonderful labels like Warp and Compact and the other good labels, you know. It's like I get lucky here in Omaha. You know, the, the guys at the record stores who think they're hip here are still into kind of the rural sort of Americana sounding sort of thing. No diss to them, but it's like, man, it's like, there's, there's not, there's really no uh, diversity there. And you guys watch, some of you watch my videos, you heard it from me. It's like, man, you guys need to diversify that. Get somebody in the store that knows about electronic music, you know, and beat that shit up. Every time I look at the electronic section, it's pathetic. Yeah, I'm calling you out publicly, homers. <laughs> Sitting here, um, I want to shout out to Jeff again. Schematics for a blank stare. This stuff gets played. This stuff is good. I'm, I can't tell you titles anymore, but I have played more of this. Dope shit, man. It's sitting here on my desk so that I can just grab it and play it. Here's another, some more things in my grab stack on my desk, okay? Um, the YMOs from Noel <laughs> are here on my desk, my grab stack. YMO is good all the time. Il Berlion. This is a Japanese progressive band that I uh, have a burn of. Never seen any of their records. Slightly like Rock and Opposition. Really good. Il Berlion. What else is here in my grab stack? This band is from Norway, and this is excellent. Psych psychedelic prog rock from the 70s. What year is this? 1976, Deja Vu. Boy, I'd love to find a copy of this record. Any of you guys sitting on this stuff, please, torture me and show it. <laughs> I love it. I will make a comment, you know, it's music related though. Okay, don't worry, don't run away. I am being a little bit um, shitty about this, okay? Feel me, people, okay? Feel me. Um, main thing I wanted to say is, you know, I, I do have a lot of solidarity with the vinyl community, but it's way beyond me, way bigger than me. And um, I know that some people, some of you folks have been contacting me through personal messages asking me to watch your videos. And I'll go and start to watch them. And I hope you're not offended, but I got to tell it like it is. When you start your videos by showing stuff like Bruce Springsteen and what is run of the mill to me, I what what is there's what is there for me to watch for? You know, it's not a, this is not a put down. I'm telling you about what my interests are. I want to encourage people that want to be a part of the vinyl community to do so. But it's pretty obvious by the records I show that I'm interested in the non-mainstream, well-established artists for the most part. Because of my history, one of those exceptions has been Genesis and even including Phil Collins. I just have mad respect for Phil Collins. Don't care about any of you guys hating on him. You're wrong. The man was a brilliant drummer and he deserves our love. Okay, so I just wanted to, again, keep encouraging you folks to make the videos and make your connections. But when you show Sticks and that and those records and Ted Nugent, I'm gone. Now I also know that it's not easy to find the kind of stuff I'm looking for, and not everyone is interested in it. But that's what I'm here trying to find out about. And I, you know. It drives me insane, but I kind of like it when people show me records that are so cool, in my opinion, that I'm jealous. Because it's like, oh, where did you find that? You know? It's fun. That's the fun for me. Okay? That's the fun for me. So please, I'm looking here to see what else. What else? Okay, I'm going to reach over here. Over Right over here, this... These are the ends of my main section. This is Y through Z, which is all, Z this is all Zappa. That's all Zappa. 
and the end of Aziz over here, where we get into Zephyr, Zoo, Zone, starting here are my comps, compilations that I've sorted out. Not all of them are here, but most of them are here. Comps there, down here, comps, comps. Then we start my classical selection, which is small. Down here is the classical. And then those are 12-inch singles that are just kind of um, one-off. So they don't, they're not... I often put my 12-inch singles with uh, the artist. But let me just um, grab a comp. So I know that's going to be noisy because of the microphone. Sorry about that, folks. Let me just grab some comps right quick and see what we get. Okay, the first one I grabbed is, this is rare. This is rare. And you post-punk lovers will know this, or you, you probably should. Fast Earcom 2, fast product. This is rare as fuck. Two Joy Division songs for the longest. This was the only place you could get the, the Joy Division songs. But that's not all. This is really good. Curly and Photography is a song I can hear in my head right away. I have to look and see who it's by. I bought this when it came out. That's the only reason why I have it. And thank God I wasn't so mad that I got rid of this. Thank God I kept this. Curly and Photography. I love that. That's by Basque Zacks. Thursdays and Joy Division are the bands on here. Here's the inner sleeve. Yeah, I've had this since it came out. Sometimes I'm just amazed at what records I decided to keep as opposed to the ones I didn't. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. I sold some records I just really sincerely wish that I still had. Like a factory product or a factory, you know, the double... Seven inch that came in the silver kind of pouch. I had that, but I sold. I got um, quite a bit of money for that. But still, okay. So that's one that I can show you right quick. I'm just going to show you the the uh, comps that I pulled. So earcom two. This is hard to find. Look it up. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong. I think this is hard to find. Here's one called Ears to the Grindstone, and. Pretty obscure. Gelat Gelatinous Records. Here's one that I probably bought for next to nothing, not knowing anyone on... Oh, no, I do. The Arms of Someone New was the band that I recognized. I don't recognize any of the others. Well, Dave Prescott, I do. This is fairly experimental stuff. And this goes back to, does it say? Uh, no, this is in the 80s sometimes, okay? Here's a cool one. Earthly Delights, a sterile sample. Sterile records. This is good. I'll tell you the artist in a second. I love that uh, detail of the Bosch on the cover. This is some good stuff. Who do we have on here? Oh, yeah. Nocturnal Emissions. Um, this is one where I have another constructive it song, um, Christopher. This is good. You would do you have this? Constructive it's Horrors of Babylon. Sebastian Hellfire. Porno sect. Despair chorus. This is some interesting dark stuff. This is a comp that that Jeff Recordman found for me, and someone else has shown this recently. Uh, LP, it's an Island Records uh, compilation. It had a kind of a unique plastic cover, but it, it was damaged badly, so I threw it away. But this is a, a real cool com compilation. Real cool. Nick Drake, Quintessence. Look at those people. Tierna Nog, McDonald, and Giles. Thanks, Jeff, for getting this for me. Really happy to have this. this. This is the real deal. This is an ESP disc sampler, volume one, the first one. ESP disc. This is real. I've had this forever. Had this forever. It's got um, tracks from the great stuff on here. Albert Eiler, um, The Fugs, Timothy Leary. Farrell Sanders, Ida Lupino. Oh no, that's Carl. Bl uh, that's Paul Blake. But I want to 
I want to share something, another personal uh, item from uh, my background. There was, there is a uh, one album on this label by a fairly obscure. I got to find his name before I can even tell you. Jazz musician Byron Allen. Byron Allen. Let me see if I can find the pic, the, the cover. Byron Allen. When I say that name, does that ring a bell to any of you jazz lovers? Do you know Byron Allen? Where is it? Here it is. Here it is. Byron Allen. Does anyone have that album? Or do you know Byron Allen? Um, the man is mad. I mean, he was very talented, but he's mad. And the reason why I'm bringing up Byron Allen is because I played with him for a while. I drummed for Byron Allen for a short time. And I just couldn't handle it. I mean, the man... Byron, if you happen to be alive, you know, you know I'm telling the truth, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I couldn't hang around long enough to get to the, to the... to make the record. It was... But I played with Byron Allen, who has an album on ESP. I'm still looking for it. I'd like to have it in my collection. I've, I've never seen it. Does anyone have the Byron Allen on ESP? Please let me see it. Here's another um, wonderful compilation that I've hung on to from Factory Records, Factory 24 for Guineas. This is, a, oh, it's actually, that's the back. Here's the cover. Excuse me, it's been a while. A Factory Quartet. This is real cool. It's got Durity Column and I have to look at these records. It's been so long. It's really nice. Gatefold. We have Kevin Hewick. I know he's on here. I bought this for the uh, Durity Column tracks because you couldn't get him anywhere. Blurt is on here. And that is good. And Royal Family and the Poor. This is real cool. I'm over the 20 minute mark. I'm about to I'm about to wrap down. Okay, here is a cool comp that I'd like to know more about. It's called Faction. And uh, I can't even tell what label it's on right quick, but Faction, this is post-punk. It doesn't even have a hard cover. Um, let's see if I can tell you who's on here. Disney Faction, Far Away, Crazy People, Directive, Shanghai, Burning Feet. Okay, I'm looking at some of the names here. Pete Wiley, Liverpool. Okay. Inevitable Records, Inevitable. Okay. This is something related to Liverpool. And this was recorded all in 1980-81. Pete Wiley of Wah Heat. Of Wah. He was part of the uh, Julian Culp, uh Ian McCulloch, uh, tr threesome that was turning things on back in the 80s with uh, Echo and the Bunnymen and Teardrop Explodes. This is from that era. I have to play this. I don't remember this at all. The last thing I pulled, awesome. It's a famous Charisma label sampler. And this is a, a French pressing. And this has Twilight Ale House, which is not on any album by Genesis. You know, now that they have all the comps out and the box sets, it's it's out now. But forever, it was only on a, the B-side of a single, which I still don't have a copy of. But it's on here, along with uh, all these other great charisma bands. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop there. That's some music for you, okay? Leave me comments, please. You know, <sighs> Hate isn't cool. Sorry. Hate isn't cool, even though you want to say it is. It ain't. 